Imagine marrying into a wealthy family and you get to experience all the luxuries of their lifestyle with the love of your life. Now imagine having to survive unspeakable actions in order to have it every year. I can't say I'd rule it out. This is 2019's Ready or Not. Spoiler alert, while I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. And for those of you that need to hear this, this is just a movie. All stunts are for the sake of story and shouldn't be attempted on your own. Viewer discretion is advised. Please do not try this at home. We start by seeing Daniel and Alex running through their mansion one night as children, and Daniel has Alex hide in a wardrobe. Soon, a man shows up with an arrow going through his gut. The man asks for help, but Daniel calls for the rest of the family to come finish the job. They shoot him with another arrow, and they take him behind closed doors. 30 years later, we see Grace going over her vows in her room, but Alex pops up just as she finishes up. They look down at his family getting ready for the ceremony, and he explains that it doesn't matter what the family thinks. He says that they don't matter because they're all horrible. I can attest that this definitely goes for quite a few families. Not to call any out, but I'm pretty sure I used those words in that exact context with my family once or twice. We're all still here though, so that's a win. Just then, Daniel shows up to request Alex's presence downstairs. He gives Grace a chance to back out, but she decides to go through with it. She's a little concerned about the fact that Daniel and Alex are giving her an out, but nothing swaying her decision. Alex gives Grace a moment to put her game face on, and she heads down to the music room to get ready to play. Once there, Becky pulls Grace aside again to find out more about her, and she opens up about how she's so happy that she was able to bring Alex back to the family. She still asks for Grace to keep Alex in the fold though, but Alex shows up just then and pulls her aside again. If none of this is warning for you, maybe the new little kids running around in masks yelling KILL 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 will be. No? Okay, cool. Maybe you deserve whatever's coming. Once Alex's sister, Emily, and her husband, Fitz, show up, the family heads to the family room to gather around a table. Tony stands up in front of everyone and gives a nice little history lesson on how the family came to be kingpins of games. New initiates have to take a blank playing card that's placed inside a mystical box, and whatever it says is the game they have to play. Well, apparently Grace pulls the absolute worst card because once everyone finds out that she pulled hide and seek, their faces go long. Tony explains to her that she has to hide until morning in order to win. And while Grace goes through the house to find a hiding place, Tony hands out weapons to the rest of the family members. Once the countdown ends, everyone leaves, except for Charity who watches the door that they're keeping Alex in. Well, he takes a secret passage that takes him through a creepy back path. Do you know how bad I want a house with hidden corridors in the walls and trap doors that lead to who knows what? I want a marsh with gators in the back too. While Grace waits around, she gets anxious and decides that she's had enough of this childish game. When she steps out into the hallway, she rips her dress a bit and tiptoes through the hall. She ends up getting pulled into a bedroom by Alex as one of the maids walks around looking for one of the kids that's left his bed. The maid goes to leave the bedroom, but she gets shot by Emily. Well, we knew that this wasn't going to be a normal game of hide and seek, but if I think Grace knew she'd be playing against a coked up Emily with a revolver, she would have rethought getting married to Alex. After the family carries the dead maid away, Alex takes Grace into the secret passages, and he tries to explain that no one ever pulls that card. He mentions that she has to play because otherwise, something unexplainable comes and kills you. When Grace starts to blame him for not telling her anything, he explains that she would have never stayed with him then. After giving her a route that leads to the security room, they tell each other that they love one another, and they go their separate ways for now. When Grace comes out of the wall, she pops up right in front of a bunch of the family. But thanks to Emily's coked up crazy aiming, she's able to slip by into the billiards room. Just then, Daniel walks in and goes straight for the alcohol. He tries to explain that he has to call the others, but he doesn't want to be the one to end her. He gives her a 10 second head start, and he calls for the others. I've got to give Daniel credit for not wanting to be cold like the others, but still being a part of the family. Well, the family gathers, and Emily's handed a crossbow. You can guess what she does with that. Yep, shoots another one of the help. They just need to give her a baseball bat or nunchucks at this point. After a little back and forth, the family agrees to use the security cameras, but Grace grabs hold of a gun before anyone can do anything. She doesn't know how the gun works since it's over a century old, but she still manages to keep hidden from one of the butlers in the kitchen. She loads the gun with a round, and Alex turns on the security system. He's able to watch her long enough to help her escape, 
but Tony and Daniel break into the security room as he bashes all of the camera controls. Tony knocks him out, and they take him to another room. Meanwhile, Grace runs into another maid who ends up getting crushed in half, and she makes a run for it. When Tony gets news of everything Grace has managed to do, he doesn't understand how someone like her can do so well. Well, leave it to Aunt Helen to shed some light on things here. It turns out that she was the widow of the man from the beginning of the movie. No wonder she's so bitter. Apparently, that was the only other time that card has been drawn, and she thinks that Alex can kill Grace in order to lead the family. I doubt that. You know who can, though? Georgie, the little boy that was missing from his bed earlier. He manages to find Grace in the barn, and he straight up shoots her in the hand. After Grace punches the boy unconscious, she falls into a cellar that holds the bodies of victims from before. On her way out, she literally has to shove a nail through her open wound in order to pull herself up. Oof, that was definitely cringy when I watched that. After Grace wraps up her hand, she rushes out of the barn, and Charity spots her as she's smoking outside. She takes aim with her dart gun, and she completely misses. She heads inside to tell the others where Grace is running to. Meanwhile, Grace reaches the fence, but she doesn't have the strength to pull herself up anymore. Soon, she sees a car's coming down the road, and she starts to scream for them to help. She squeezes herself through the fence that cuts her, but the car just tells her to get out of the road. When she sees another car coming with a spotlight, she rushes into the nearby forest, and we see the butler pull up and spot the opening she crawled through. He calls back to Tony, and he tells him that he'll go into the forest to look for her. Back at the house, Daniel thinks that this is a done deal since Grace got out, but Tony isn't taking any of this lightly. He warns them that if they don't kill Grace by morning, all of them will be killed by the spirit of the great-grandfather that made the original pact. So, all the family members, besides Daniel and Emily, head out to help the butler find her. Emily and Daniel take all the dead bodies of people that she's killed to the cellar, and Emily asks Daniel what happened the last time they played hide-and-seek. He swears he remembers everything, but he turns focus on what he did wrong as a big brother. He thinks he should have never let him marry Grace. Daniel thinks they all deserve to die for what they did. But Emily doesn't think her kids deserve to die. Just then, the child from hell, Georgie wakes up and tells Emily that he shot Grace. He's literally the only one to even make contact with a shot. Back outside, Grace thinks she's almost out. But the butler catches her in a field where he drives her down. He tackles her and he pulls out a gun. She manages to knock it out of his hands, and she takes a piece of her wedding dress to make a way to choke the butler. Now that he's out of the way, Grace hops into his car and drives off. She calls a security representative through the car, but when he goes to check the records on the vehicle, he finds that it's been reported stolen. He shuts down the car remotely, and suddenly, the butler shows up and shoots her with a tranquilizer gun. When she comes to, she's in the back seat, and the butler's FaceTiming the family to tell them that he has Grace. They celebrate for a moment, but when they watch her kick the back of the butler's head until he crashes, they lose hope again. I thought they were all out there looking for her. You mean to tell me they just stepped outside, looked around, and gave up? No wonder it took so long for them to find her. He's the only one looking. Well, now that the car's crashed, Grace crawls out of the car, and she comes face to face with Daniel. He's none too happy with being the one to come face to face with her, but he manages to talk himself into knocking her out anyways. At least this way, Alex will be alive still. Tony shows up, and the two of them take Grace to the house to prepare her for the ritual. Back inside, Alex is grinding away at the bedpost he's stuck to. Soon, Becky comes in, and she tries to reiterate that this is all for the sake of the family, even though she actually likes Grace. Alex tells her that if Grace dies, he'll kill them. She tries to find out what made him leave in the first place, and he mentions a time that he was sacrificing a goat as a child. It bothered him that it didn't bother him at all. But when he found Grace, he liked how she made him feel like he could be the good guy after all. Well, I feel like anything would make you feel better than sacrificing goats in your spare time. That's a whole new level of blood magic. Best to leave that stuff alone. Next, we see everyone preparing themselves for the sacrifice that is Grace. When Grace wakes up, she finds herself trapped to a satanic table, and all of the members are surrounding her in robes while Tony chants in Latin. She continues to struggle, but it's to no avail. Everything goes forward as planned, until Tony raises the knife to end her life. This is probably one of the best feel-good character turnarounds in a while. We knew Daniel wasn't all bad, of course, but I didn't expect him to end his family's lives like that. Daniel unties Grace, and Alex cuts through the bedpost. As Daniel and Grace go to find Alex, Grace can't believe that he just poisoned his family with acid. But he assures her that it was only enough to mess up their insides for a while. 
Soon, Daniel's wife Charity shows up with a gun pointed at him, and she realizes that he doesn't care if she dies. She goes ahead and shoots him in the neck, and Grace takes this chance to knock her out. As Daniel bleeds out on the floor, he uses his last moments to tell her to run. When she gets to the door, she's stopped by Tony, and he doesn't understand how she was able to make it this far. Well, she knocks him out with a lantern and sets the mansion on fire with the same light. Just then, Alex makes his way downstairs to find Daniel still bleeding out. But I'll say it again, last moments right here. Grace ends up running into Becky who fights her hand to hand. Once again, Grace manages to get the upper hand, and she takes advantage of it as she beats her to a bloody pulp. After doing this, Alex pops up to see her right over his mother. He goes to reach out to her, but Grace pulls back and apologizes. He apologizes too, and he makes the realization that she won't be with him after all of this is over. So he slowly grabs her and calls out to the remaining family members that she's in that room. When the others come in, they see that Grace has killed Becky, and Aunt Helen reminds them that they have to have this done before the sun rises any second now. They hold Grace down on the table, and Helen hands Alex the ritual dagger. As he looks down in Grace's eyes, she can see a cold stare. Yet again, somehow Grace manages to roll just enough to make him stab someone else, and she gets up with the knife. Then crazy old Helen opens the window to reveal the sun, and they all cower like they're vampires about to burst in the sun. Nothing happens, and Fitch even calls out the fact that it was all a load of crap after all. Alex tries to reach out to Grace, but she's not having it. Just when Aunt Helen goes to finish off Grace, she implodes. Suddenly, the phonograph plays the hide-and-seek song, and they all start to implode one by one. Grace is loving this, but it eventually comes down to Alex. At first, it doesn't look like Alex is getting punished, but when Grace throws her ring at him, it happens anyway. As a sort of final farewell, the original family member that built the legacy can be seen as a ghost in the flames that nods to her as she grabs Becky's cigarette case and leaves. Once outside, she takes a seat on the step and lights a cigarette as the officers check on her. When asked what happened to her, she simply tells them that it was in-laws. Then the credits roll. If it has Samara weaving, you can bet your bottom dollar that it's going to have some sort of dark comedy aspect with it. And Ready or Not does not disappoint. I hope to see more of her soon give it a shot. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.